Hey guys, I'll be here back again with our Ducati Scrambler project. One of the things missing from the Ducati Scrambler, especially the older version, is the gear shift indicator, which is pretty useful if you're new to motorcycle or if you just like me are lazy and don't count the, the gears. So I got myself one of those cheap ones from Amazon, about $50 or so. And uh, we're gonna install it and see how it works. But now for the chit chat, let's get on it. First thing I'm gonna do is route all this wire from the front where the gear indicator display is going to be back under the seat. Under the seat is where the diagnostic port, also known as DDA, is. By the way, if any of you knows what DDA means, leave a comment down below. And if you're right, I'm gonna like it. Otherwise, thumb down. I'm gonna route the wire, therefore I'm gonna remove the seat and possibly remove the tank. Uh, you can do all of this without removing the tank and just routing the wire underneath, but I like things done in a certain way, so... Removing the seat is super easy and if at this point you don't know how to remove the seat, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. But moving on, we're gonna lift the tank and to lift the tank we're gonna remove those 8 millimeters over here and also this T30 over here, there is one per side. So I'm gonna start doing it, follow along. So this little washer is between the tank and where the screw actually screws in. So it's in the, on the back side for whatever reason. To get some more space, uh, I want to remove this plastic collar over there and this is a pop pin, so you just pull it out like that and obviously it's four of them, one here, one here, one a little bit to the side and one on the other side, just like that and this one just comes out easy as that. At this point I have more breathing room to exactly see where the wires go and how to get them from this side to the other side. There is one thing you might want to do before you start routing stuff around is put some masking tape on the actual display because this thing is gonna have to go through some pretty tight spaces and if you don't want to scratch it put some masking tape. Now I decided to route the, the old wire on the left hand side for one simple reason there is more room under the tank for this big connector to go through so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go in in front over here come back down and follow those other wires back through the tank and in the back the last little bit is to get this plug over here to come up here so I need to remove this cover over here which is nothing more than a four millimeter and the reason is simple the reason is under this cover over here there is the DDA so this is what we were looking for At this point, I'm actually going to plug it in. And let's tuck all this wire in here. One wire you want to keep out is this black wire over here. So I'm now going to put zip ties all along the, this wire under here. I'm gonna do that, catch you up in a minute. Now that the wire is being routed from the front all the way to the back and plugged where it's supposed to be plugged, we are left with this extra black wire. This black wire needs to be connected to any positive terminal that is switched. So anything that will have power on when you turn on the key. And I decided to plug it in into the rear tail light because the rear tail light comes on when you turn the switch on. So I'm gonna route this back here and uh, plug it in. 
Removing the rear tail light is fairly easy. It's about two Allen keys, about three millimeters. So it turns out it's very tight back here. So I'm gonna give myself some room by removing this little plastic piece over here. I'm gonna move it aside. Now I have more room to play with, uh, with those wires. Remember, if you decide to go with the rear tail light, the wire you actually need to attach to is the yellow one. So you got the provided, uh, whatever it's called, pass it through, the black one through, pushing this metal thing sticking out. Time to clamp this red flap across. Time to take a look if uh, that thing lights up. Yeah, it seem, uh, seems like I got all the wires uh, the way they're supposed to be, so I'm gonna button everything up and then we're gonna do the learning sequence for uh, the gear indicator. Turn on the ignition. The display is gonna count down from 6 to 1, then L is gonna be blinking. Start the bike at this point in neutral, make sure that the bike is on a stand, a proper stand that will not collapse. When the display shows first gear, engage first gear and run the RPM above uh, idle. Once first gear is learned, the display will move on to the next gear and do the same, shift to second, run the RPM up and so on for third, fourth, fifth and sixth gear. Wait until sixth gear become at zero. At that point, the sequence is completed and you're good to go. Now that the gear indicator is being set up properly, uh, which is a weird procedure in a garage because you gotta turn on uh, the bike, let it run through all the gears. Just remember one thing, leave one of the doors open so that the exhaust actually has somewhere to go rather than stay near and you passing out. But once the procedure is done and this thing has learned the gears one through six, including neutral, it's now time to remove this masking tape and actually attach the, the display to the handlebar. I decided to go with industrial strength uh, Velcro because uh, if in the future I find a better way to attach the display to the handlebar, the Velcro is easy to remove. Uh, I wanted to put it up here in front with uh, the, the other LCD, and but the key seems to get in the way, so there was nowhere I could have put it that the key or the keychain wouldn't get on top of it and cover it up. So over here seems to be pretty visible and it's right there, so I'm gonna velcro it up and I'll catch you guys in a minute. We are done for today. The gear shift indicator is in place, it works properly, and it seems to be quite solid, even just with Velcro, so I'm liking it a lot. And it's working flawlessly. I took the bike uh, down the street to check it out, and it seems is recognizing all the gears, so I'm pretty happy with it, especially because it was cheap. The installation was fairly easy and the only annoying part was routing the wire all the way back, but if you follow the instructions and mostly if you chose to put the wire in the same place I did, remember to use the yellow wire rather than the red one. The red one is for the brake light. But as always, for everything I used in this video, check the description down below. It's gonna be a link, obviously, for the gear shift indicator. If you like the video, like. If you love the video, obviously, subscribe. Till then, ride on, and I'll see you next time.